Good morning, welcome to Tara at Home. I'm here with Colleen Zimmerman from Tara, and uh, we are in one of the most beautiful little spots right here in the middle of the garden center in Waterdown. <laughs> yes, I was saying, I just want to stay here. This is amazing. This is, um, again, creating nice little spots, mm -hmm. um, using planters, even in the smallest little space, because a lot of us don't have a lot of space anymore. True, even if you don't have a garden per se, you can yeah. still have garden plants on your deck, on your patio, on a balcony even. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, so for a lot of people, inner city, uh, people are either living in, as you said, condos, so you have balconies, or very small backyards. Say you're living in a strip of you know, townhomes or, mm -hmm. or condos, uh, and you have just a little patch of grass in your backyard, you can still create a deck and a space that makes you feel like you've walked your own personal oasis, right? Definitely. Yeah. And it's thinking outside of the box then, rather than just using annuals too, you can also use shrubs and evergreens and even edibles on your patio. And that, and, that, and again, that's something I wouldn't think of doing, right? But um, I've definitely learned from inside, you know, using herbs to make your kitchen look beautiful. Mm -hmm. And obviously, again, they're functional. But I wouldn't have thought of using, for example, a Japanese maple. Um, as we have over here, I wouldn't have thought to, to do that and plant it in with annuals. Yes, and most gardens, you know, that's the coveted specimen to have like a really nice Japanese maple. But yeah. you can also grow a Japanese maple in a container too and just combine it with some other annuals and use that as your focal point. And the great thing about using containers too is you can move them around. So if you're okay. having yeah. a party or something and you have a little bit of an area that's not looking so wonderful, then you can kind of bump it up a notch by putting a Japanese maple in a planter. So, so I mean, obviously they're they're going to grow, and I mean you've got to eventually you have to transplant that, but for a while it's okay in a planter. Yeah, and, yeah. A, and a lot of things too, like Japanese maple are a dwarf plant, so anything mm -hmm. that is dwarf works quite well in planters because they okay. don't grow very fast yeah. and they don't have as large a root system, mm -hmm. so they can grow in a container for quite a length of time. Cool, I love. It. I mean, I love that look. As I said, I wouldn't even have thought about something like that. Let's talk about also um, using a lot of this, uh, uh, bordering and creating almost uh, again like a little space. Mm -hmm. by adding like well, again behind us here these hydrangeas and yes. creating this space this is nice yes it's also uh, a good idea to think of container gardening and as a movable garden mm -hmm. so by using like the hydrangeas here we also have boxwood as well as used you can mm -hmm. create mm -hmm. spaces within your small space create little outdoor rooms you can create barriers to your neighbors by put, adding some trellises in behind and growing some vines on it sure yeah and you know creating little outdoor rooms yeah and I love that idea because again as you say like things can start to grow and develop as they make their way through the season mm -hmm. and you do almost create a little bit of privacy exactly right and yep. in, in some people are living in spaces where they don't really have any privacy so you have to make it <laughs> yeah right? even something like this on a balcony and mm -hmm. even if you were to grow like an annual vine like a morning glory or um, scarlet runner beans or something like that uh -huh. that grow extremely fast yep would give you going up the trellis would fill in quite quickly and give you some privacy as well okay so you almost recommend that over even a clematis or something like that clematis or, is good too yep the annual vines they grow a little bit more quickly okay and you'll get um, flowers all summer long but clematis with in combination with one of those vines is also good i've done ah. clematis with morning glories okay. so that you get kind of both textures going on in there too that's a nice idea because mm -hmm. I, I i'm actually trying to figure that out in my backyard right now i have a trellis but there's nothing there and i'm trying to think of what i would put there but again having an annual vine i never even thought about doing that yeah you can do them you in combination or even if you like the clematis, choose yeah. two different varieties of clematis that bloom at two different times, uh, and then you get a longer blooming season. See, as well. that's when it's good to come in and talk to you guys, right? Because a lot of times, um, just in general, you know, people think about some that when you when you are when you're landscaping, you're thinking about um, colors as they're changing through the season and and you know and heights and that as everything's growing. But it's also you need to think about that with flowers too mm -hmm. when they're going to bloom. You don't want your entire garden to be green at one point exactly. and not have any color. So yeah, okay. so just as you're doing your planning for if you had an actual planted garden yep same thing when you're doing your containers you want to think of color all season through too okay so that's actually a good idea now even something like this this is interesting again we're talking about using edibles exactly this is actually lettuce <laughs> it is you can just have this on your patio and you know just trim it off once in a while and you can um, either buy it already grown or start uh -huh. it from seed they grow really quickly so it's even great for kids so that they can see things growing yes, and that's watch that's things that's kind of nice I like that idea so something like this I mean when you're when you're trimming it back and you're still trying to create you still want it to look nice. How are you, how are you supposed to achieve that? <laughs> That's the secret. You can kind of selectively trim out certain varieties yeah, and then let it grow dense, up. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love that. That's a really great idea. So again, we've talked about, you know, boxwoods. Obviously you need to, there is some maintenance involved here, right? A little bit. But uh, particularly with boxwoods, I mean, you've you got to maintain. Yeah, but the, with the boxwoods, a little bit of trimming, just yeah. like you would in the nursery or in your garden mm -hmm. and keeping things watered. 
since they're in containers, they're going to dry it a little bit more and you want to fertilize it a little bit more frequently because they are in a self-contained little garden. Okay. So you'll That's need to do that. Those are good tips. And of course, you know, at Terra, all of, I mean, every sort of across the gamut, all the different miracle grows yes. and all the different types yes. of fertilizers that you yeah. need that are specific for, again, especially planters, as you say. Yeah. And especially with the dry weather that we seem to just be ongoing and getting, um, you need to be on, on top of those. Yeah, right. and sometimes you will need to water probably twice a day, like in the morning before you go to work, and when you come home, you may need to water again when Ooh. you have really hot days. So. Oh. <laughs> I know. I don't think I get around it. <laughs> well, it's amazing, though. Sometimes you think they're gone, and they're, like, hanging, and then all yeah. of a sudden, it's, they're back to life again. And that's so. one thing about shrubs, too, is that they tend to have a little bit more resilience. Okay. Yeah. So, so if they do wilt a little bit, you can bring them back Yeah, from, they, they, from the so that's good. <laughs> People are all looking for the low-maintenance <laughs> answers in life, right? Yeah. So, again, uh, you know, also, we're talking about, you know, growing planters with cucumbers and tomatoes and stuff in them they look really pretty yeah they do <laughs> you can have them like they have so many different colors of pots of um, steaks and tomato cages that you can use now so you can have a lot of fun with it and yeah. add some pump to your garden I know like, to say, having like pink pink uh, containers I mean it's gorgeous and, yeah. and also of course with a lot of the vegetation they have flowers associated with them so yeah. there's something kind of nice about that exactly and they're usable and and uh, now of course we've created this little space here um, you know even having just one of these outdoor rugs and adding the lanterns mm -hmm. and all of this again it's just it's just kind of just sort of thinking outside of the box sometimes right exactly. and, and thinking about what else I can do to add some color and mm -hmm. textures and all that right yeah just thinking differently and not just annuals from containers but thinking of the shrubs evergreens perennials mm -hmm. are an amazing way to add some texture and color mm -hmm. into the garden and they're very low maintenance mm -hmm. and that's what I love and, and again so let's talk about the combination of this here so you've got I mean, I would have never thought to put like a cedar type shrub with, yep. with yeah, a, an it's, annual. It's perfect for on a balcony because it does give you a little bit of privacy. It gives you a little bit of wind protection too if it's a windy area. Sure. And then it's got um, your impatience in there. Yeah. As well as uh, some a still be. So yeah. you get the different textures in there. Yep. And then for overwintering, if it's, if you're on a balcony, bring it right to the the side of the building and mm -hmm. just kind of protect the pot itself just try to insulate it with some old blankets or old quilts or things oh, like that okay. old comforters just okay. to try to insulate it make sure that it's been watered before it goes to bed mm -hmm. but many of these things will overwinter quite well I love that I mean that, and that's a great part of it so out come the annuals and next year you can put them back in again yep. and you've got a good nice start to your pot exactly oh good I love this stuff Colleen thank you so much for the great information My pleasure. we just need a couple cocktails now and we're good to go That'd be nice we'll see you here <laughs> we'll be back with more at, at her at home <laughs> Live color fully at Terra, where color lives. I don't get it, Dave. I use grass seed just like you, and mine's not growing as well as yours. It's the difference between uncoated seed and Scott's Turf Builder coated grass seed. Coated grass seed is different? Yeah, you can see it's different just by pouring it into water. How does it work? It's like every seed is wrapped in a water-absorbing sponge. I can almost picture it. Introducing Scott's Turf Builder Coated Grass Seed. The exclusive coating absorbs up to two times more water. It's the quicker, easier way to start growing a healthy lawn. New Scott's Turf Builder Coated Grass Seed. Heritage Perennials presents Tara's Perennial Pick of the Week. Rebecca Goldstern is one of the best perennials of all time. Combine it with ornamental grasses for a great show in summer. Heritage Perennials. Look for us in the blue pots. Welcome back to Terra at Home, now in the kitchen set. I'm here with female race car driver Ashley McCormick. Thank you so much for coming on the show with us here today. Thanks for having me. This is, okay, so this is fun. We've talked in the past, um, but uh, this is uh, kind of fun to kind of catch up where you are, but uh, for, for viewers that are just uh, joining us, we need to talk about how does uh, a woman, and still probably we would say a male dominant industry, how do you how do you get into something like this? So let's go back to the beginning. You, yeah, the beginning. <laughs> well, my dad used to race, so mm -hmm. he started when I was three, and I grew up at the track. I grew yeah. up at Mossport every weekend watching him race. 
know, playing around with the tools and that. Yeah. So I started when I was seven, eight, started getting interested in it and did some go-karting, moved up to Cascar Junior, which is a half-size Cascar. Mm -hmm. uh, raced that up in London until I could get my license. It's amazing though you can start that young though, yes. right? I think people yeah. forget that that you, you, you can start as just a, a little child. Definitely. And you well, now would you at that age when you were seven and eight getting into it and even moving into ten in your teen years, were you the only girl on the track? There was usually one other one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Out of you know about twenty guys. Yeah. So the, yeah. the there was less of us. There's did you feel Did you feel comfortable though? Did you feel fine just because you've been around it all the time? Growing up at the track with my dad's crew, yeah. you know, there's 10, 11 guys there every weekend. I was just one of the guys. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't really think about it as being different. Now, you have a sister as well who's not really interested in race car driving, but do you have any other siblings that... No, it's just the two of us. Just the, so, yes. so your dad left, left out yes. having, a, <laughs> having the one daughter getting into it, right? That's pretty, yeah. pretty exciting though. I think we know as, as having you and I both have young little ones and, and, and you know when they're around it, that that's the influence, right? And exactly. you're saying, so your son, his first words <laughs> were race car? It was sad, but true, <laughs> yes. Not he, even mama. No, <laughs> he just from the beginning loved cars, yeah. trains, anything with an engine that yeah. went fast. So odds are, possibly, odds are. with your influence mm -hmm. and uh, Between, your dad yeah. and your family in general. My husband as well races, so, you know, I have no hope. He <laughs> will probably be racing as well. You know the industry yeah. is going to, you're going to be in it probably for your lifetime, okay. right? That's okay, I yeah. like it. Yeah, so. that's good. <laughs> so, okay, so now we've moved in your, once you got your license, that, that probably changed everything, right? That kind of moved you to another level. When I got my license, I got a BMW and started racing it regionally. <laughs> And we did that up at Mossport for a couple of years, yeah. and then we decided to move into a pro amateur series, mm -hmm. which is Grand Am. So I moved into that with the Cobalt. We did that for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and then I was expecting my son, so we took a little break. Yep. And now we're in the Camaro. So. Wow, and that's what exciting. I remember yeah. when uh, the last time I had talked to you, you had just got your Camaro, and I had this diehard love for Camaros. <laughs> I had the opportunity to drive in 1968 years ago and uh, for a radio station that I worked for, and so I fell in love. And then you got one of the new ones. So how cool is that? I love it. It's yeah. an awesome car. It's very competitive in our series. Is it? Yeah. And it looks nice. So it looks. They're, they're like awesome it. looking. Yeah. And you're really starting to see a lot more the you know the, the ones that are for the road on the road these mm -hmm. days. So it's just like oh yeah, they're, they're so popular. cool. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They're just it's just so exciting. So tell me about now where you're standing. Like we you know we're now moving into we're in July and the last few months have been pretty hectic for you. Like people, mm -hmm. a lot of people that are in the race circuit don't really know what it means for you, your lifestyle and how busy it can be. Well, our series starts in January. Okay. Um, we start in Daytona and between January to October, we're racing every couple weeks. Oh. So when we were in June, we had three races. We were in Mid-Ohio one weekend, the next weekend, Wisconsin, and then uh, we just finished in Watkins Glen. Wow. So, wow. you know, the summer months get a lot busier, yeah. a lot of traveling, because none of the races are near home, so. Of course you know. not, and so, so I think that's probably a nice thing of you having family, and your family being mm -hmm. involved in it. I, everybody goes, right? My mom and my dad always come. My sister oh, comes when she nice. can. Yeah. Um, my husband, when he can get some time off work, can sure. come. But my son typically comes with me. My mom watches him, and that that's it's actually nice. Said. That, that yeah. works out really well though, right? Because yeah. I mean, with your, your mom also having been, been in, in it all these mm -hmm. years, that's all she knows too, right? Yeah, so she, she was there with you, so yeah. it's, that's, a, that's kind of a fun thing. So um, it, you've got all these races, but let's talk about the training behind it. So when are you training in between the races? Well, when we have a race, we usually are there for a couple days. We'll fly down Wednesday, we fly home Saturday or Sunday. Okay. So we usually practice while we're there. And that's it. You oh, know, it's okay. not like you can practice during the week and take your car. Well, that's what I wonder. Out. Yeah, because it's a different, no. it's a different kind of thing, right? I mean, people, you know, mm -hmm. you, you know, play football. A couple guys can toss around a ball or yeah, whatever. Practice but every couple times a week. Yeah. No, we don't get to do that. So no. we show up at the track. You know, I have to learn it, uh, get the car ready, set up the car, and, and yeah. do it in a short amount of time. So. It can be a little yeah. hectic, but it's fun. I would say that though. So it's, it's, uh, it's definitely one of those pressure kind of industries, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you've got, you sort of got the lull and then you've got the go, yeah. right? And it's just pressure. And you have a, a co-driver. Yes. So tell us about like that concept of having a co-driver. Well, in our series in the Grand Am Continental Tire, we 
have two drivers. So the races are typically about two and a half hours long, mm -hmm. and somewhere you hope in the middle is when you do the driver's change. Mm -hmm. um, each driver has to be in the car for at least 30 minutes mm -hmm. to get points. Okay. And so they'll come in, the first driver will come into the pits, and we'll change tires, fuel the car, switch drivers, so I will jump in or he will jump in, depending on who's finishing. Wow. And in about under 30 seconds, have our seatbelts on, helmet hooked up, um, <gasps> the gates out, everything ready to go. It's and a real you're system, back isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, people are intrigued by by the pit crews and how all this all works, but mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is down to a fine art timing-wise. It yes. has to be. It is, right? definitely. And the other thing is, when you're the second driver and you're going out, you have to be up to speed immediately because you're entering a race that's already in progress. It's already in progress. So you don't have time to, you know, warm up and, no. and get a feel for it. You have to go you gotta and go. be on it. Yeah, because that's yeah. the thing. Some of those races, they're, they're already been in the car. They're just going. Mm -hmm. So what do you, do you like to start? Do you like to finish? I like to finish. This year is the first year that I've been finishing. Okay. Um, everybody likes to finish. I you want to take the yeah. checkered flag. So <laughs> yeah. me and my co-driver, we, we switch back and forth because mm -hmm. we both like to do it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the adrenaline is uh, pretty intense, I'm sure. It is. Yeah. It is. It's hard to sit in pit lane and wait to get in the car because you have to watch the beginning of the race. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things happen at the beginning of the race. Yeah, I bet. So you're hoping you're going get, to get in the car mm -hmm. and that, you know, he's not. And then it's all going to go, right? Yes. That it's going to happen, right? Exactly. And then you have that anticipation before you jump in and then and then it's good yeah so. so you how do you feel about your success so far like let's talk a little bit about obviously some of your success I I'm very happy with how yeah. I've been doing since I've been in the pro series mm -hmm. we um, I was second in points when I started to expect my son yeah. so we had to uh. stop halfway through that <laughs> season and it Go was figure, very right? <laughs> close to winning that season uh. so we're trying again now mm -hmm. um, when we started the Camaro, it was a brand new car, yeah. so we had a lot of development to do to it. But this mm -hmm. year, we are right on track. Um, out of about 70 teams, we are 13th in points right now. Wow. Um, That's great. We still have a couple races to go, so we could definitely move up, but we've had a couple hiccups. So, you know, yeah. that's, that's racing, as that's, they say. That's the way it so, is, right? Yeah. Now, where do you want to go from here? Anywhere I can. Yeah. You know, it's. It's a hard industry to move up in, mm -hmm. you know, only I can imagine. one in 10,000, you know, there's a million races out there. It's pro Make sport, it right? It's the, the way it is. Yeah. So I'm putting all my time and effort into it and we'll see where it takes And we can watch your, uh, your race that you were just in on July 14th? Yes. yes. Uh, Watkins Glen will be televised on July 14th and it was an exciting weekend. So okay. you have to watch it, to find out. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ash McCormick. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks this is for awesome. Best me. of luck to you. Thank you. All right, we'll have more chair at home. We're in the kitchen. Coming up. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, Look for trees and shrubs with the Medallion Plant Tag. Medallion Plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Welcome back to Tara at Home, and uh, we are here with Chef Rachel, and we're barbecuing today, yes. which is uh, kind of fun to do because it's summer, and we try to find ways to grill anything whenever we can. Right. So other than meat, you can grill, well, a whole bunch of things, right? right. Vegetables we know we're all familiar with, yes. but we get to grill these guys today. Yes. Okay, so what are you so, doing with them? This is not non bread. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing grilled non bread two ways, as I call it. So I'm going to show you two different uh, topping choices that you can that you can put on these, mm -hmm. and it's great. Just like an individual pizza or a flatbread, mm -hmm. uh, they're just the perfect size for one person, for you know a, a lunch, dinner, snack. Mm -hmm. 
any time of the day. It's a thing what I find in the summertime too. It's a lot more. It's a lot more about hors d'oeuvres and, and snacks. Sometimes people don't even really eat a formal dinner. It's it's like you're out in the patio. You're having some nice drinks, uh, some lemonade, whatever it may be, and just munching away. So. Yeah. You know, make a giant bowl of guacamole, have some of these, and you're good to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's the thing, too. You can just grill them um, and use them with dips, mm -hmm. right, as well. So you're brushing, uh, what oil are you So just there? some olive oil on okay. here, um, just so it doesn't stick much to the grill. Mm -hmm. Now, I have the grill on a medium-high heat, and, um, and it reads about 300 degrees. Okay. So you just want it hot enough to kind of get these cooking, maybe, um, you know, some, some grill marks on there. Yeah, and again, that's Perhaps. what's going to be the difference, right? It's this. Barbecue, as we know, always adds a different flavor. So mm -hmm. getting the grill marks obviously is aesthetically pleasing, but but having that, it, it adds a nice, a nice flavor to it. Yes, right? it, it really does. Yeah, it does. So we're just gonna grill these, you know, maybe two or three minutes. We'll check on them in a moment. Okay. Um, just kind of get that side cooking. Then we'll flip them over, um, get the other side grilling, and, and at that time we'll put our toppings on. Great. So I've pre-prepared all these toppings, which is great. You can, you know, it's not too much work. Just some veggies, some cheese, a little bit of chicken. Mm -hmm. um, have them all prepared ahead of time. Bring it out like this, and then you can, you know, still be outside with your friends and family while you're. Yeah, great idea. While you're yeah. So if we had everybody behind us, uh, you know, having a party, you can still do your thing and uh, dress them up, and that's that's nice to be yeah. connected to the party. <laughs> exactly. So I'm gonna. Uh, I'll tell you now while these are yeah. while these what are, are working gonna, what yeah. we're doing. I am just going to uh, have a quick look just to see how they're coming along. It's oh, fast, eh? Look yeah, at that. very fast. That's they're looking great. really good. So we'll just leave this for another minute or so. Okay. To, we'll get them off. Uh, the first one is going to be um, tomato and goat cheese. Mm. So we're going to brush it with a little bit of olive oil. Put our tomato slices on. Now these are heirloom tomatoes. Uh, really nice. I like them because the you know the bright colors. Color. Uh, they're great. Nice and nice and ripe. Very beautiful I think yes um, so put some tomatoes on some goat cheese then we'll dress that with a salad after so we'll that's just right cook that's that. gonna be cool I like how you're adding that salad you're seeing a lot now a lot more flatbreads and that coming out and uh, and putting the arugula and the dressing or a little bit of salad on top it sounds mm. kind of funny to people but it, it it's really awesome of course it's the last finishing touches but it's really a great idea yeah uh, so that's that's the first flatbread okay. these two look good I'm just gonna move these to the back a bit just see so get a little crispier. Okay. Uh, the second one we're doing is a chicken pesto. So I've made some pesto with uh, with basil. I even put a bit of parsley in there, some Parmesan cheese, olive oil. Uh, got a chicken breast here that's cooked. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is we'll brush the bottom with a little bit of pesto. We'll mix some pesto in with the chicken. Mm. We'll sprinkle the Asiago cheese and some red onion. Great. So that's Ooh, the that's second nice. one. Nice. Yeah. That's the thing, right? I mean, so many possibilities. And one thing too is awesome is um, a lot of times people will do these. You can make dessert out of these as well, right? So you can sure. go and add, you know, the, the butter and the cinnamon and apple slices. Chocolate, or banana. Chocolate, yeah, you can chocolate banana, that's great. Like, mm. there's so many options. So it's really easy, especially the, these pre-packaged uh, non breads that you can buy now. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, great for everybody, for kids. They can pick their whatever toppings they want to do. Yeah, Obviously, exactly. Obviously, you don't it's want your fun. kids barbecuing, but. <laughs> it's a fun thing too, yeah. right? Yeah, oh, they smell so good. So I'm gonna awesome. turn these down just a little bit just to give me enough time to put the toppings on. So okay. I've brushed this side with oil now. Yep. We'll put them back on. Wow. Mm. And uh, and now we can now we can top them up. So okay. let's get started. I'll do just a little bit more oil on top here. Okay. And then we'll just lay the uh, so there's no there's no real sauce for this first one here. Okay. It's just a little bit of oil. We'll lay the tomatoes out. That's great. I mean, especially once, you know, as we're getting now in summer and all these these uh, great vegetables are local mm -hmm. and they taste good, like tomatoes, as we know, taste amazing when they're local um, yep. versus the, you know, the ones that, uh, that we're getting in the off season. So load them up. Tomatoes are, I, I just could eat them like apples when, it, when, it's, when they're in season, right? Yeah. It's such a great, such a great vegetable. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites. Oh, it looks so pretty. Um, a little bit of salt and pepper too. Yes, I think good on these, point, right? With, with especially with tomatoes. Yeah, I don't think we'll I don't think we'll put any salt uh, in on the other pizza because there's a I put a lot in the pesto, in the pesto. that I made. Yeah, but just sprinkle this up and then the goat cheese and then you just want to cook them. Wow, um, just for a couple minutes until the cheese is melted basically yeah. and you know the um, the bottom's all done. It's really easy and straightforward. I mean, yeah. and you can and you know obviously as you say you're adding you know something to it to, in, a, in a bit a little bit but. You know, you could just add some fresh herbs on top, whatever you like, and you're good to go. Of course, I do have some fresh basil out to put on the um, mm -hmm. on the pesto pizza to mm -hmm. finish it off. 
But yeah, basically we just want to. Mm, I want to do this get tonight. Get lots of cheese. <laughs> it's fun. It makes me just want to want to cook it now. <laughs> Let me go home. Every time I'm, I'm with you, uh, Rachel, I always want to go home and make what you uh, what you've made. <laughs> That's I nice. generally Thank do. <laughs> That's great. It's inspiring. Awesome. Okay, so that's the first one. So that Perfect. just needs a couple minutes. Okay. These are probably good. So let's get uh, the other side going. Great. Yeah, really fun, easy. Now we're putting Some obviously olive oil, just a little bit on there as well, just to kind of, since you're putting them back down on the grill, but mm -hmm. you know, just so they're not sticking. But um, right. again, as you say with this one, it's just the pesto, which is awesome. Right, yeah, so we can do that now. Um, again. So great, the great thing too is now you're seeing you're seeing a lot of um, pesto, prepackaged pesto, so mm -hmm. you don't even have to make it yourself. You can go and buy little jars of it. You can buy it in the grocery store. Yeah, you can. It makes this uh, a lot easier as well, stepwise, right? Yes. Yeah. Very good. If you have if you have basil hanging around, it's good to make it yourself. I find it yeah, always tastes it better. It tastes better. It tastes fresh. If yeah. you do have you know a little bit of extra time, because it doesn't really take long either. No. If you have a if you have a food processor or a blender, yeah, it doesn't even take that long to do. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick break and we'll continue to build these and then we'll do the finishing touches when we return. We'll be right back with more Tara at Home. Live color fully at Terra, where color lives. It's time to grow a great garden. It's time for Miracle Grow Expand and Grow, the innovative new planting mix. Expand and Grow expands with water, loosening your soil and giving your plants roots a balanced mix of air, moisture, and Miracle Grow plant food for up to three times the vegetables and flowers. Guaranteed. Miracle Grow at the root of a great garden. Welcome back to Tara at Home. We're finishing up our uh, non flatbreads yes. and uh, they look like great little pizzas, great for entertaining. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we finished up putting all the toppings on. Yep, we have uh, tomato and goat cheese on this one here, and then on the, the one at the back, we put some pesto. We mixed our cooked chicken with some more pesto, mm -hmm. some Asiago cheese, and red onion. Great. Uh, and they're all ready to be kind of finished. Okay. So for the ones, uh, the ones at the back with the pesto, we're just going to finish it off with some baby basil leaves. So that's pretty, that's pretty simple. That's Sticks nice. with the theme. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, for this one at the front here, we're going to make a little bit of a salad. So we have some arugula. And I diced up some um, avocado, mm -hmm. so we'll mix that together. Oh, this is going to be good. Chopped uh, green onion. Can this mix is a great one that. for vegetarians as well, and that's what's nice too. I mean, so many people are opting out of eating meat nowadays for different reasons. So, you know, being able to make these and adapt to your guests so easily, mm -hmm. so easily, even per pizza, per little flatbread. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So a little bit of oil. We have some red wine vinegar here just to give it um, you know, some flavor. Yep. And I'm just gonna mix this with my with my hand so it'll be easier to place on the pizza. Right. Yeah, on a windy day like this, <laughs> this is what happens, right? Is that you the arugula goes flying. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so we just uh, dress the pizza up with the salad. Great. That just gives an extra depth of flavor, mm -hmm. right? So it's almost like you're eating your pizza with a with a side salad, right? Which yeah. is another addition you could do. Exactly. With, right? Yeah. So great. So there we go. That's our awesome. finished product. Of course, you can find all these great recipes on our website, terragreenhouses.com. And you can join us every Saturday morning at 530. That's it for today. Oh, gosh. All I have to say is enjoy summer and enjoy these. Thanks, Chef Rachel. Thank you. All right. That's it for now.